Welcome to lesson 1.4 on page 44. We're going to be talking about reasoning and proof. And proofs are a big part of geometry, um, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, as you, um, <laughs> depending on how you look at it. But um, I'm going to let you go through the explore section and read all the postulates and classifications of angles. Um, but we're going to head to page 45. We're on, uh, looks like question 12. We're going to be matching the description to the most appropriate image. <coughs> looks like one of these is, is done for us. So, uh, and specifically the one right here is done for us. The, the big take, the big um, hint is is that uh, little square in the corner there that tells us it's a complementary angle. Therefore, uh, that's why the choice is E, complementary angle. Okay. Now for this first choice here, um, the big hint is the fact that this angle and this angle both have one hash mark going through them, which means that they're equal. And so what that is, is whatever the, the big angle was, it's going to cut it in, in half exactly. And so um, what that is, is it's our angle bisector, or A, because it's bisecting um, that bigger angle into two equal pieces. Okay, let's take a look at this one over here. Um, and here we have a segment of a line and, and two unequal pieces, right? This is clearly not equal to that. Um, but it does um, separate into uh, pieces, and so what that is, is uh, the segment addition postulate, because you're saying this piece plus this piece is going to equal the big uh, big piece, n plus 18. So it's a segment addition postulate. Um, don't get that confused with the next one, because yes, you do have a segment and a segment that's going to be added to create the bigger segment AC, but we are told we can the, the big thing here is that uh, that hash mark uh, tells us that those are equal pieces, and what that means is is um, this point B is going to be the middle of that segment AC. So this is the definition of a midpoint. Okay. And then uh, for this last one, we have a uh, 90 degree angle and a 90 degree angle, right? You might think that's a complementary angle, but this both adds up to a 180 degrees, which is the definition of a supplementary angle. So there's that. Um, okay, now in this next section, we're going to be introducing proofs, which, um, like I said, uh, some people love it, some people hate it. <coughs> but we're going to be using the properties of equality uh, in particular to, to be doing this. And so, um, Really, uh, it's really not super complicated. Uh, the properties of a call you just give a justification for why you're doing what you're doing. So, for example, if we take a look at this first step, if x equals 2, then 2x equals 4, well, how did you get from this to this? Well, we multiplied both sides by 2, so therefore, we're going to say the multiplication <laughs> property of equality. Property of equality. Okay, here we have um, 5 equals 3a, therefore 3a equals 5. So um, we can see that it's clearly going back and forth. And so what that is, is uh, it just means it's symmetrical. So therefore it's this symmetric, symmetric, oops, property of equality. Okay, and then here t equals 4, 5t plus c equals 27. So it looks like what happened was you took that value of t and you plugged it in. And, what, and, and when you plug it in like that, it's called substitution, right? So this is the substitution property of equality. Okay. And here, 9 equals 4x, 4x equals m. Uh, therefore, nine equals m. So this, you can see, there is a um, there is a uh, logical progression to this, right? A equals b, b equals c. Okay. Therefore, a equals c. This is the classic uh, transitive. I think it's called transitive. Transitive. Nope. Transitive property of equality. Okay. There we go. So there's that. Okay. Uh, use deductive reasoning to solve the equation 3 minus 4x equals negative 5. Okay, so let's start from here. 3 minus 4x. Oops, why did I do negative 3? 3 minus 4x equals negative 5. Well, 
Um, there's multiple ways you can do this, but I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. And because of that, because of what I did right here, this is a subtraction property of equality since we subtracted 3 from both sides. Property of equality. And then we're going to divide by negative 4 to get 2. And since we divided, this is the division property of equality. <coughs> All right. And that's that. Question number three. Um, we're going to be writing justifications for each of the following steps here. So um, let's see. For this, for this first part, uh, it looks like the first part here, uh, hj um, equals hi plus ij. So there we have, again, two segments adding up to the bigger segment, hj. So we're going to call this the um, ooh, segment addition postulate. Okay, so we get that from here. So I'm going to cross this out since we've used that one. Uh, and then, in, in so that was step one. Step two, what's going on here? Seven, so how do we get from here to here? Well, we substituted those values, right? Hj is is this big length right here, 7x minus 3. So this is going to be the substitution property of equality. Okay, so I'm going to cross that out. And then from step 2 to step 3, what happened here? It looks like we simplified this, right? We brought it together. So, oh, that's just simplify. So you can eliminate that one right there. And then step four, what do we do here? It looks like we, it looks like we added three to both sides, right? So this is the addition property <coughs> of equality. So that, and then from step four to step five, what happened there? It looks like we subtracted five x from both sides. So this is the subtraction property of equality and then lastly we divided both sides by two so this is oops I mean then and we can do this division property of equality